The image you see here represents a simple phylogenetic tree. A phylogenetic tree is a history of lineages, of organisms as they change through time. It implies that different species arise from previous forms via descent, and that all organisms, from the smallest microbe to the largest plants and animals, are connected by the passage of genes along the branches of the phylogenetic tree that links all of life. Let's look at a pretty simple example to start with. From left to right, we have a sponge, a crab, and a bear. Crabs and bears are more closely related to each other than either are to the sponge, so their black lineage lines intersect first, here. Sponges, crabs, and bears are all animals, so the node where the crab plus bear lineage meets up with the sponge lineage is marked with a yellow dot and labeled metazoan, which is a term scientists use to refer to animals. Phylogenies also include information about time in them, with the present at the tops or the tips, and the past moving towards the bottom. Therefore, this yellow dot represents the last common ancestor of all animals, an organism which itself is now long gone, but whose ancestors, the sponge, crab, and bear, still remain. This next tree is pretty much the same as the first one, except that we recognize that the crab plus bear lineage is a new group of its own, a subset of animals called bilaterians. Bilaterians are animals whose bodies have a plane of symmetry, left to right, for example. This red dot thus represents the last common ancestor of all bilaterians. This next tree adds in a different type of organism, one that is no longer alive. The trilobite, shown here, is an extinct member of the arthropods, a group that also includes our crab. So we indicate this on a phylogenetic tree by adding in a branch for the trilobites that doesn't quite reach the top of the image. Its branch is shorter because it no longer exists now, but is extinct. If we were to draw the entire tree of life, we'd find that most branches would be these shorter ones. The vast majority of species that have ever lived are now extinct. Now we're going to take a look at a more complicated and larger tree. This tree you see here is a subset of the entire tree of life. It contains all of the animals here, including our bear, our crab, our trilobite, and our sponges. And it also includes the closest single-celled living ancestor to the animals, this blue cell here, which is an organism called a coenoflagellate. You'll notice that the sponges, marked by this green line here, are now shown as three different branches instead of just one black branch. This is because recent work by scientists has shown that some groups of sponges are more closely related to the rest of the animal clade over here than they are to each other. That means they can't be represented on the tree by a single lineage line because they don't all share one common ancestor. Instead, we show them as three separate lineages. We still call them sponges because they all share some major traits with each other, including the way they feed, by pumping water through the walls of their body and extracting tiny particles of food from the water. Okay, back to our tree. There's an extra circle on this tree that we haven't seen before. The orange circle here at the base of the bilaterians plus the cnidarians. The cnidarians are a group of organisms that include the jellyfish and the corals. They're not bilaterians, but they share some other traits with bilaterians that sponges don't share, including having a gut to digest food in, as well as having a nervous system. The cnidarians plus the bilaterians are called eumetazoans. So this orange dot represents the last common ancestor of all bilaterians plus all cnidarians. What about our quinoflagellates over here on the left? These single-celled organisms live in the oceans and in freshwater environments too. They eat small particles of food and bacteria in the water and move around by beating this little flagellum tail. They may not look fancy, but recent analyses of their DNA show that they are the closest living single-celled relative to animals, which is why we put them just next to the sponges on this tree. So what about all these blue lines? Each blue line represents a hypothesis, or a scientifically informed guess, as to where the Ediacaran organisms may lie on this tree. 
notice that all of the branches are short because the Ediacaran organisms are extinct. This first blue line here indicates that the Ediacaran organisms were not animals, but were multicellular organisms that involved independently of the animal lineage, which is why they lie below the yellow animal node. This next blue line indicates that the Ediacaran organisms were actually an extinct group within the complicated sponge category. This blue line indicates that the Ediacaran organisms were more complex than sponges, but were not quite as complex as eumetazoans. This blue line indicates that the Ediacaran organisms were an extinct group of cnidarians. This blue line indicates that the Ediacaran organisms were more complex than cnidarians, but were not yet bilaterians. And this last blue line indicates that the Ediacaran organisms were actually bilaterians, just like crabs, bears, and trilobites. So what's the right answer? Which blue line is the real line? We really don't know. It is likely that not all of the Ediacaran organisms fit into just one blue line. They probably consist of representatives from two or more of the categories I've just described. Scientists are working hard to study the fossils and combine that information with additional knowledge about modern animals and ancient environments to piece together this complicated puzzle. It's still definitely an open and active area of research.